So hello and welcome to another Flower of Light Mystery School podcast and with me again is Christine. Good afternoon. And Charlotte. Hello everyone. Um, So just before we get into um, what I wanted to talk about today, I just wanted to kind of clear up um, a couple of things that I noticed that I said in the last podcast, the one um, duality and the illusion and ascension. I was talking about, uh, at one point I mentioned about how energy cannot be created or destroyed, uh, the first law of thermodynamics. Yeah. And then later on in the podcast, I went on to say about how, um, you know, highly advanced technology doesn't um, destroy energy or pollute energy. It actually creates energy, which kind of <laughs> is not really what I meant to say. Oh, almost a parallel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It kind of contrary to me saying that it, energy can't be created or destroyed. But mm-hmm. it's true, energy cannot be created or destroyed. But what I actually meant to say was that um, not that uh, advanced technology. I was talking about, like, for example, um, over unity generators and perpetual motion. And what I should have said or what I was trying to say was that um, highly advanced technology like as in perpetual motion it takes less energy to power up the thing than it does to it it produces more energy yeah over time than it does to to power it up it produces more energy than it requires to power you wouldn't stop it because you have to start all over again and build up it only takes a small energy to get it going and then it goes perpetually it keeps going it keeps going it keeps going so therefore the amount of energy that it's actually producing yeah like a renewable energy source like yeah um, in Dublin, like modern day, it terms. needs a really like, small amount of energy to get it going, yeah, and then it'll just keep going forever. Well, yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah, I get you. So that's what I was trying to say. Yeah, I didn't mean to say that it created energy. What I meant to say was that it, um, a small, it's only a small amount of energy that's needed. Yeah, for it to then continue and have its own momentum. Yeah. Momentum. That's right. Yeah, if you like. S- f- 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 <laughs> Sorry, fulfill itself. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so like perpetual, yeah, perpetual motion. Um, and then just the other thing I, I kind of <coughs> wanted to say as well was that I, um, in the podcast that I did about the Emerald Tablets, I mentioned that um, the Emerald Tablets got their name because they came from the Emerald Isle. Um, and that's true, but I should have also said that um, they also got their name because of the stone on which uh, the information itself was transcribed. Um, which was an emerald stone, of course, and it was um, it was special because it was an alchemically created stone, um, which nobody knew. That was part of the mystery of the emerald tablets. It wasn't yeah. just the information; it oh. was how they actually made the stone yeah. because they did make the stone. Yeah, it's like the stained glass in the. Of course, yeah. Um, it's a, it's a formula. Yeah, the al- the alchemically mm. created stained glass where. Um, in the old cathedrals where they don't even know how they oh that's oh. absolutely true mm. yeah. yeah how they created them. Bruges and Notre Dame they can't mm. recreate this there's actually just a strange tangent but in Bruges one of my favourite cities there's a hotel that has windows that are lavender from the outside mm-hmm. but when you're inside and looking out it's clear mm-hmm. wow yeah. but it was destroyed the formula so no one knows how to make uh, it yeah mm-hmm. yeah so the emerald stone also got its name because it was a green stone yeah Mm-hmm. And because it was an alchemically created stone, like the stained glass, and they don't actually know that was the mystery as well how the stone was created. A- and the white powder gold as well would have been alchemy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so actually, I just wanted to clear up anyway the two things about you know that I um noticed myself when I listened back to the other two podcasts that I, I did. Can I just ask you? I've also read people that say that the emerald tablet was actually a pillar discovered by Akhenaten. No, that's different things. Okay. Um, well, it's not different things. It's kind of the emerald tablets uh, are actually something that were supposed to be transcribed onto stone, yeah. like an emerald stone, and yeah. those tablets were up to a point in time. Um, because it said that Alexandria or Alexandria Alexander the Great mm-hmm. um, discovered them, and they were on display in the Library of Alexandria. Um, now, there's another story that talks about Akhenaten rediscovering the yeah, Emerald, that's the one that d- I'm d- the Emerald d- Tablets. Yeah. Referring to. Um, and the other kind of telling of that, if you like, is um, th- how there was two pillars created to record the knowledge and the story of Atlantis. Oh, and that's the story. That's They're the two pillars that... That's what they're talking about. Yeah. And they're also the two pillars where... Um, Plato got his information from Solon, the Egyptian priest. 
Oh, okay. okay. They're the two pillars. So it's no, the emerald tablets. Yeah. And the pillars, the two pillars, um, contain the same information. If you like. Exactly. Yeah. Like. It's about the advanced information that we had in our so-called past. Mm. Yeah. You know? So the the pillars would have been probably symbols. All of the um, whole thing. Well, or I would think have been that text and symbols. Oh, you mean symbols? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it said that the, the pillars were um, transcribed with symbols that only the Egyptian Priest. high yeah. priests, like or wisdom keepers, That's could, it, yeah. could translate. De- de- yeah. And Solon exactly. was one of those, and he translated what was on the pillars to Dropias, and Dropias then translated it to I think his grandson, and it was his grandson that uh, told, told to. Plato. Yeah. So it's that kind of. Lineage. How, how Plato got that the yeah. information about Atlantis. Yeah. So this, yeah, that's a good point. There's two um, things mentioned about the emerald tablets, and one is what I just said that they were written on a, an emerald stone, yeah. an alchemically created emerald stone, and the stone itself was part of the mystery because they don't know how they actually made the stone. Created it, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then that same information that would have been translated onto the emerald tablets um, was uh, apparently, according to this other story about the two pillars was transcribed on to the two pillars. Now, the difference, I would say, between the Emerald Tablet and the two pillars is that the Emerald Tablet specifically talks about the operations of energy and the workings of energy in the universe and how it operates, if you like. Whereas the two pillars would have contained that information, but also they were said to have contained the recorded information of Atlantis. Mm. So those are the pillars, not the tablet. The pillars, Yeah. yeah. Um, now the emerald tablets also um, you could say also are all of the information that's inscribed on the walls and the temples and the tombs and, mm-hmm. and what I call the book of coming forth by light you could also say and I have said that that's the emerald tablets as well yeah. because mm-hmm. collectively all the information and the 42 books of Toth are all the emerald tablets if yeah. you like mm, okay. so it's like it's a story that's telling Truth. The same thing in different yeah. ways. Yeah. Like I'll give you an example. There's another story in another book that we're all, well, maybe not everybody, but a lot of people will be familiar with the Bible. Mm-hmm. Um, and in the Bible, it tells a very similar story of the Emerald Tablets, but it tells it in a different way. Mm-hmm. So in the Bible, the story of um, the Emerald Tablets is Moses mm-hmm. climbs Mount Sinai and he receives the two tablets mm-hmm. with the Ten Commandments and he brings them down. And because the people are um uh, forgetting amnesia no they're um melting the gold and making oh, a, a it, golden yeah. calf mm-hmm. and so uh moses gets angry breaks the, the first two tablets goes back up and gets another two but anyway that's the another telling yeah. of the story of um Akhenaten discovering the two pillars if you like mm, yeah because um one of the pillars was in luxor one of those pillars that yeah, were, that's what I remember reading that yeah. Akhenaten discovered the one in Luxor. Yeah, one of the well, he discovered the two of them, but it, one of them was in Luxor. Um, the other, uh, I think the other was in Heliopolis, maybe. Yeah, and that's where he studied, or was it the city it, of On? Yeah, but that is Heliopolis. Yeah, On is On. Heliopolis. It was known as On in the Bible, or Anu or Anu. Yeah. Mm. Um, and so therefore, the two headed Anu are the yeah yeah tribe so there of you Anu. Go. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Um. So. Uh, yeah, um, so it's kind of telling the same story, if you like. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A rediscovery of ancient information specifically related to what we might call Atlantis. But that, that's what they had that to do, right? If you Leave like. it in all mm. different forms for different people mm. to crack the code mm. kind of a thing, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. And as we said, Akhenaten is credited with discovering or rediscovering rather mm-hmm. uh, the Emerald Tablets mm. in the form of the pillars and, you know, the one that was in Luxor. Yeah. And sorry, go ahead. Well, I was just gonna ask: Do the Emerald Tablets have anything to do with the forty-two negative confessions of yeah. Matthew? Yeah, and remember, I said there's forty-two books of Toth. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, so, that's what. I'm and about. Matt and Toth are the male and female of each other. Mm-hmm. So the forty-two negative confessions and the forty-two books of Toth. You see. Yeah. That when you actually look into it, they're Start kind of at. yeah. You see that they're kind of all connected. Um, different aspects of the same. Yeah. yeah information if you like yeah so the 42 negative confessions of matt if you like would um be coming from a feminine aspect Mm -hmm. the 42 books of toth would because it's toth would be coming from a male aspect do you know what i mean um so uh 
so yeah I just wanted to um anyway clear up that I wasn't that I didn't mean to just say that the Emerald Tablets just got its name because of the Emerald Isle. It is because of the Emerald Isle because it's even written in, in the Book of the Dead as the Egyptologists call it or the Book of Coming Forth by Light um, how Toth was Lord of the Island in the West and came from the Island of Flame. I mean there's lots of uh, references to it and even mm-hmm. in the Edfu, Bill, uh, Edfu texts where it talks about the arrival of the Seven Sages at Zeptepi. Mm-hmm. And that's another point in terms of Zeptepi. I mean, I've spoken about Zeptepi and said that it's to do with the first time. Mm-hmm. But um, to be honest, Zeptepi actually more closely relates like zero point. No, yes. Yeah, Zep- do you know what I mean? Yeah. Then first time, like no time rather. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Then first time or a zero time, if you know what I mean? Yeah, so because time doesn't exist. <laughs> yeah, like when everything goes to zero. Yeah. Well, when you, And when then you, it restarts. Which is like neutralizing it as well. Exactly, neutralizing, yeah. Yeah. So the whole story of, you know, when the mound builders came into Egypt and the Seven Sages, and this was the time of Zeptepi, and at that time they founded a new center. You know, mm-hmm. we've discussed this before. Right. And um, we created the whole energy field on the ground in the form of the temples and the mounds. Well, they placed the mounds first, mm-hmm. and the first one at the center of the earth underneath the Great Pyramid. Mm-hmm. Well, the Great Pyramid wasn't there. They right. marked it with a mound, and then the pyramid was placed later. Um, and so um, that's all the kind of uh, you know references on how we see how it kind of links back to Ireland and mm. you know the Emerald Isle and all that yes um, but uh, I suppose in terms of like the zero point in Zeptepi it would be um, almost like a metaphorical telling of how um a, a would it be like in a, a in cycle the, of experience okay. was beginning if you like because i was thinking of the bible where they said first there was the word was it the word the light the word anyway the word yeah the word was well God. yeah i mean I think the story of zeptepi or and the mound builders coming into egypt is kind of a telling of a rebuilding of the atlantean civilization after yeah. their civilization had yeah. been destroyed in a mm. different land if you like mm. Um, Because they came into Egypt. That's what the story that tells us. They came from somewhere else. And this is how I first started looking at where did they come from. Mm -hmm. You know, and then that led me to realize they came from the area of Ireland, England, Northern Europe, as we've talked about before. Mm. Um, So uh, the whole story of Zeptepi or Zero Point is a kind of a telling of a time when um, everything went to zero point, if you like. Mm hmm. And there was a, a, re, like a resetting, or something? a resetting, yeah, kind of like a resetting of a, cy- a, a new cycle. Yeah, like the end and the beginning of a cycle. Yeah, exactly. Like at that like exactly. crucial meeting point where yeah, that's what a, a zero circle. point is. It's when the end and the beginning are the positive and negative cancel each other out when you that's get it. a neutral, yeah. which is like a zero point. Which is your circle. Yeah, so yeah. I was just saying with the dot in the end. Yeah. So Zeptepi is that to- that point, if you like. Yes. Where. Um, it was a time of no time if you want to put it that way Mm -hmm. and then the cycle of time began again if you know what I mean yes so in that zero point we're told that the foundations of the grid were laid so that would be the morphogenic fields of the earth yeah but they created a physical one which was on the ground right Mm -hmm. because the physical one emanates the Mm. um, frequency Kind yeah, of... frequency and information, if you like. The physical sites on the ground are almost like, if you could imagine um, a tunnel of light going from each site up into the sky. Okay, that makes sense. And like connect a, them with the like energy Like a pillar grid. of light? A, a pillar, pillar of light? Pillar, pillar, yeah. yeah pillar. Hey, a pillar or a tunnel. Yeah. We've got pillars. Well, that's what the pillars in the temples represent. Yeah, exactly. The pillars in the, all the temples represent how they um, connect the, the floor and the ceiling of the temple. Yeah, the earth to the heavens. Yeah. They connect it, but they also keep it separate. Yes. Do you know what it's I mean? It's a paradox. It's yeah. both. Mm. It's like kind of like, like an ether one, you know, but like yeah, that exactly. kind of separates it, yeah. but, you know. So if you could visualize each ancient site, and I'm not, you know, all over the world, um, ejecting these pillars of light, if you want to mean, or, mm-hmm. um, up into the higher crystal grids, mm-hmm. diamond right. grids. Um, so the story of the mound builders creating that grid work on the ground in the form of temples, pyramids, mounds all over the earth. Mm. What they were doing was they were creating the physical structures which would then 
connect to the higher energy grid, the crystal mm. grids. It's also and like, oh, sorry, continue. No, I was going to say become, I mean, they're always active, but become fully activated, if you like, at because the activation of these things is dependent on cycles. It's not dependent on human beings. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It's dependent on universal cycles. Oh, yeah, okay. so it's so, like ascension now. People think it's it's happening for the... No, it's a cycle. It's a cycle, oh yeah. Yeah. People forget their energy lowers. Yeah. Then they enter a new astrological age because the earth is always moving. But you're how many times even in a week or a day would you forget something and then remember again? I do it all the time. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'd remember something and then by later on the day I'd have forgotten it again yeah. and then I might remember it like later on that night do you know what I mean <laughs> yeah, yeah. so I mean if you can do that in one day or one week like you can you certainly can do it over exactly a whole existence of cycles energy. of time yeah. yeah anyway and that actually brings me to another uh, point. kind of point of this podcast as well was um, <clears throat> as I mentioned I in the last podcast I did about the duality I wanted to talk about um, more about time um, and why time was created I did touch on it but I realised when I listened to the last podcast that I didn't say what I meant to say so we talked about the creation of calendars and um, how uh, we went you know kind of more in the ancient time it would have been a 360 day a year calendar that's right yeah. Um, and how in the mythology of not just ancient Egypt but you know all around the world there's different mythologies that talk about how the extra five and quarter days were created mm -hmm. you know um they talk about how they were created but not why they were created if you yeah, like i mean it, that's it, an interesting it, point yeah it is embedded in there obviously if you read i mean alchemy and the mystery schools and mythology is all about reading between the lines yeah <laughs> you're not meant to take the story literally that's the last thing you're supposed to do with mythology yeah mythology is like a symbol yeah. a symbol always represents something else it's always more than what you see. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So you're not meant to actually look at myth or listen to a mythological story or read a mythological story and take it literally, you know. So embedded in there somewhere in all the mythologies is the reason why time was created, which you kind of have to search, I suppose, yeah. <laughs> to find it. Um, but anyway, uh, so we mentioned language, you know, the reason for that, um, because consciousness was falling, information had to be preserved yeah mm -hmm. and then time okay so a time and space really time and space are kind of like um the flip side of the same coin if you like yeah okay yeah well yeah y y you yeah. create space when you create time it's like the chicken and the egg they yeah. come together you know yeah you don't yeah. know what's first mm -hmm. yeah well what einstein discovered was that the faster you go in what we call space and the closer you approach, I think we spoke to about this in another podcast mm -hmm. as well, the closer you approach the speed of light, mm -hmm. um, time, time dilation, it's called, time slows down. Yeah. To the point where there is no time. <laughs> the neutral zone. Yeah, the zero point, yeah. Yes. And when there is no time, then you are as light is. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, you That's are the same. That's the yeah. energy, you know, the, his famous equation. Mm -hmm. Um. E equals MC squared. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so when you're light and the only difference between you and your present condition mm -hmm. and you as light is the speed. <laughs> Do you know yeah, what I mean? exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> because if you increased your speed to the speed of light, mm -hmm. um, you would be everywhere all at the same time. Yeah, you wouldn't be limited to one form. And therefore space does not exist for you. Mm. Yeah. That's right. Nor does time. Yeah. Because if you're everywhere, all at the same yeah. time, there is no time, but I don't know how else to say it. Mm -hmm. If you're everywhere um, and experiencing everything all at the same moment, if you want to say, or the same now, then there is no space or time. Yeah. So the only difference, or sorry, rather, the only thing that's standing between you and that experience is speed, is the actual speed at which you're vibrating. Yeah. Yeah, like measuring it. Because if you could uh, increase it. the vibratory rate... Mm -hmm. then and approach the speed of light and and be the speed of light mm -hmm. be at the speed of light yeah then you would be everywhere all at the same time and there would that's be right. no time or space mm. wow and, and that's, that's, that's alchemy big stuff that's and that's alchemy. above metatron's alchemy. cube right yeah ah yes well everything in terms of the flare of life and geometry. the platonic solids and all the geometry is describing everything in the manifest universe that's right mm. it's also leading you to be able to 
work your way out of the manifest universe exactly. and into the information about how just pure energy works because that's also contained in there mm. in terms of the flower because you have the flower of life and the flower of light mm. yes and they're actually two different things yes right. <laughs> but anyway, clarify that <laughs> yeah but well anyway yeah so we know about the creation of calendars it's embedded in all the all the mythology around the world mm-hmm. mm. um, and therefore it's important you know they that that it's talked about do you know what i mean it's important yeah what i mean is the people who embedded it in the mythology obviously thought it was important enough to, yeah yeah that's what i'm trying to say well the yeah, native yeah. americans have their own calendars and yeah just recently in the last year some of their wisdom keepers said they were allowed to share their history mm-hmm. which they'd never done before about the star people and mm. their timeline is totally different from ours oh yeah it's like um if anyone's ever heard of the dogon tribe yeah um in africa they timbuktu yeah um mali they migrated you can follow their line of migration out of egypt mm-hmm. but they have highly advanced their um what we would call or what <laughs> uh civilization calls primitive people if you know what I mean. <laughs> and um yeah not. so therefore they should not have this knowledge they don't know how they know all this stuff yeah. you know yeah but they have highly advanced knowledge of the star system of sirius sirius a sirius b and sirius c really? yeah which are not visible to the eye that much sirius a is the only one that's visible yeah hmm. b and c are too small Sirius B is a dwarf star. Yeah. Um, yeah. We, uh, it's very small. Um, and apart from anything else, Sirius A is so bright mm-hmm. that it blocks out Sirius B. You can't see it. Yeah. Because it's so small. But Sirius A is so bright that it blocks it out anyway. Yeah. 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 And Sirius C is completely invisible to the naked eye. It's only been detected relatively recently, I think, in the 80s or the 90s yeah. with radio telescope. Yeah. So they actually never did see it at all. They only heard it. Yeah. Mm. And they were but probably yet, like, ugh, so far yet, fetched, these primitive people. Well, but right? yet, you've got this tribe, the Dogon tribe, who migrated out of Egypt. So therefore, they took the, this information yeah, from Egypt. Yeah, they saved it. Mm. About the star system of Sirius. And they talk about Sirius A, B and C. Now, how could they talk about two stars in that mm-hmm. system, B and C, that can't even be seen? Yeah, with modern day technology. But they have exact information about them, you know? Of course. Mm-hmm. So, <clears throat> another thing about... Uh, Okay, obviously, the creation of time, or no, okay, I'm saying the creation of time. What I should really be saying here is the creation of the illusion of time. Yeah, mm-hmm. the illusion of time, yes. Um, because that's what it is. Mm. It's an illusion that events are separate and that everything is not happening now. It's the illusion of time. And therefore, um, we have the illusion of going from point A to point B to point C. In other words, you know, from a baby to an adult. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And again, like, from a seed to a tree. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's the illusion of time. Like, the tree is already in the seed. That's right. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. It's Obviously, there. it has to be, because <laughs> it's a how, pa- it's how a... could it come out with the seed if it wasn't yeah, already there? It's a, it's yeah. a fractal pattern. The tree is already in the seed. Mm, it's in, a, yeah, in, in wow. a different dimension. Yeah. A fractal pattern. That's it's fractal. Yeah, exactly. That, it's fractal. Well, yeah. Everything is fractal. Think about it like that. Mm-hmm. And I noticed actually that I said when I listened to the podcast as well, what? I was referring to Russian dolls and I said um, it's holographic, you know, how Russian dolls won't fit into the other. Yeah. I actually meant to say it's it's fractal. Oh, yes. Not holographic. Because holographic yeah. is just one yeah, image. Yeah, I know. Being... I meant to say that's another. I realize I say things like that only when I listen to myself. Um, I meant to say it's fractal, like one Russian doll fitting into another Russian doll fitting into another one. That's called a fractal, mm-hmm. you know, like a tree is a fractal. Yeah. You know, the way you of have the, the whole tree, for example. If you take a branch off that tree, that branch is is almost a perfect copy of the whole tree itself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, like we're fractals. A yes, little baby coming out of a fully grown adult is a fractal. Mm-hmm. It's a smaller version of the bigger version. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's the fractal. Grow to be the, the bigger version. Everything in the universe is a fractal. Mm-hmm. And that's why the sacred geometry is important. It's the canon of proportions for all the fractals in exactly, the manifest yeah. universe. Mm-hmm. And um, as we know, um, it's actually uh, the seed of life is actually the visual image if you want to say of your DNA mm. yeah yes it's you, the it's, it's, yeah, right. when you draw the flower the petals become the double helix mm-hmm. yeah and um, the cross section can be seen as the seed of life yeah you know um, there you go so the story of you know, Zeptepi the Zero Point and the Mound Builders and all this kind of story. It's embedding the, the, the information on how 
this illusion was created, the illusion, the time space matrix, the illusion of us creating an experience that we are these three D beings in this. You know, mm-hmm. it, it, that's what the information is embedded in. To there. go along with our memories being right, right. And so the whole time thing is how we um, measure our lives. If you like, mm-hmm. yeah, the, the amount of years we have on the mm. planet. So. Yeah. You know, on average, we have I don't know what's the average lifespan. One twenty eighty uh, or uh, well, now it's like between uh, eighty and one twenty. We'll say eighty, whatever. I'm not sure, but so what we're saying is we've got eighty cycles of the sun, Earth, yeah. sorry, around the sun. Mm-hmm. Uh, your average person mm-hmm. has on the planet eighty uh, um, yeah cycles of the Earth around the sun. Uh, Birthdays and that that's their life from start to finish. You know, um, and when you think of the you know, infinite cycles and the infinite nature of creation, you know, to think that you would have from start to finish 80 years, you know, mm. it's nothing. No, yeah. it's nothing. Do you know what I mean? It's the blink of an eye, like, not mm. even in the grand scheme of things. So mm. that's the illusion that you have a limited amount of time. Yeah. That's the illusion. Mm. Um, well, actually, and something how just... can you have it three? Sorry, Christine. How can you have just uh, if you no, just hold thought, it in your head? Just, how can you have a three D, um, physical material, dense experience mm-hmm. that requires the illusion of time and space? Mm-hmm. Y- you know, in order to have that experience, you've got to have the the illusion of time and space. Yes. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Um, and so, sorry, you were going to make a point, Christian. Yeah, I was going to say um, my point was oh shoot. It's okay. I'll keep talking on your mic. No, it'll you. come back to me in a second. I'll just um, give me one second. So another... Oh, oh, no. It won't. <laughs> <laughs> I almost had it again. It'll come back. It'll come back. Another um, reason, and it's a very important one, for the creation of time, is so that we can see the connection between what we desire and think. And I'm making a difference between a desire and a thought. Because, and maybe, I don't know if I've made this clear or not, but... Um, Thought and, and even the concept of tough, as we've discussed before. Yeah, yeah. And I've said it's the male. You know, we're talking about the male energy. Yes. Male energy is always active. Yes. So, active so thought in itself is active. You know, thinking is an active thing. Mm-hmm. Um. So um. What well, in terms of um. How we think and what actually happens in our life, if you like. Mm-hmm. Time is a, fa- a safety defense mechanism that we created, mm-hmm. um, so that we, as I kind of touched on in the last podcast, so that we don't manifest yeah. every fleeting thought that comes into yeah. our head, because yeah. we do actually mm-hmm. have the ability to do that. Mm. It's not that we have the ability; that's our natural ability. Yeah. I mean, we don't have to go and seek it, or, or you know, it's it's what we do naturally. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? It's it's how we create. It's creation. It's how creation takes place. Yes. Well, it's why movies are the way they are and all that because they're seeding the reality they want to manifest. Oh yeah, well that's. Movie. But my point before that I remembered is um, about uh, time and clocks and news reports often have the sound of a ticking clock mm. or time. So yeah, I yeah, think yeah. like people are like subconsciously programmed mm-hmm. to think about time and mm-hmm. to you know like. I think that's one of the reasons why they use it. Oh, well, yeah. Well, if you think of the word time and break it down, tie me. <laughs> uh, yeah. Nice. There you go. You know? Anyway. Um, time. Time. Okay, <laughs> so if you... Wibbly wobbly. So time. what time does, or the illusion of time, is it makes us think that there is no connection whatsoever between what we think and what actually happens. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Okay. Yeah. And that's a natural byproduct of consciousness, you know, going to sleep because of the natural cycles. Yes. You know, and it's also the 3D experience. That's mm-hmm. what we came to experience. That's what we came to experience. Yeah, it's not it's not bad. We came to experience this. But know? the light is also the information. So when the sun goes down, you get tired, right? Because mm. the information's not beaming anymore. Well, yeah. Oh, it makes like cycle, yeah. Mm. Well, yeah, on on a, on a daily cycle, and then yeah. on, a, on the larger cycle, it'll be, I yeah. suppose, the movement yeah. away from, from the galactic center. Um, and like our sun, as you said, Christine, mm-hmm. um, our sun is, uh, light is information. Yeah, yeah. And when we are in 
uh, lack of light, if you want to put it that way, yeah, when we were in dark. <laughs> um, unlightened. Not yeah, unlightened. unenlightened, yeah. <laughs> um, we're not in direct uh, receipt of the information, if you like. Mm-hmm. And that's on the daily basis. You can have a visual of when the sun goes down, it's dark. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. you're not subjected to the light mm-hmm. and the information, if you mm-hmm. like. So when the sun goes down, you go asleep, as Christian pointed out. But on a larger cycle, the fractal. in the cycle, yeah, yeah, exactly. In the cycle that takes 25,920 years, mm. which is what all the ancient sites mark as yeah. well. And the processional cycle, it's also called. In that larger cycle, which is the cycle that measures the fall and rise of consciousness, mm. um, it would be our movement away from the central sun mm. of the universe as opposed to the sun of our solar system. Mm, yeah. So on a daily basis, we move away from the sun of our solar system and we go to sleep. But on the larger cycle of the 25,920 years, we also do that. Yeah. We move away from the central sun of um, of the universe, if you want to say, or the galaxy. Yeah. But I mean, ultimately, it's of the universe. Mm-hmm. It's the source, if you really want to go back to the point. Yes. Um, so you move away from that source light um, in a descending cycle mm. for a period of approximately 12 and a half thousand years if you want to measure it in time <laughs> um, and that's the descending cycle where consciousness is going to sleep mm. as it does at night time yes you know and then when it begins to rise again it's like the morning of the larger cycle yeah and it begins to rise again mm. um, and that's all incorporated of course in the illusion of time if you like but as i wanted to say um that was created by us for us um and it's remember. important to remember that it was us that's, when I say, you know, this was created, I mean, we created it. And another point I want to make, when I say we at any point in time, I'm not talking about just us in the room here. Yeah. I, mean, yeah. I mean, we as in all people, you know, um, we created this because uh, ultimately we are immortal. Whether you have remembered that or not is, yeah. is I was going to say neither here nor there, but whether you've remembered it or not is not the, the point. The point is you are regardless of whether you remember or not Mm. um so time is so that we can gradually make the connection between what we think and what happens Mm. yeah because if you're not paying attention and most people don't so you know you hear of people who are on the journey to find themselves they're on a spiritual path there's many different ways to put them to say you know people meditating buddhists yoga all sorts of different Mm -hmm. things people doing spiritual journeys workshops everybody is doing anybody who's on that path are kind of you know searching for the same thing yeah and we're all searching for the same thing which is happiness fulfillment joy love you know Mm -hmm. remembering freedom abundance prosperity you know we're all looking for the same thing um Mm. so uh the time illusion of time was created so that we could have the experience of not remembering that our thoughts and desires create everything. Now, our thoughts, as I started to say, there are masculine because it's an active process. Thinking is active. That's right. Mm. But desires, desires mm. are of the heart. Yes. You know, and a desire is a passive thing. Mm. So it's like the, the head versus heart. Yeah, like exactly. Uh, it's not versus, it's head and heart working in cooperation yeah. together. Yeah. In, in, well, un, in unity, well, that's, in unity, well, that's yeah. the disinformation, right? You yeah. know, you have to choose one or the other one. You should just use them both. In exactly, together. you're meant to use both. It's a fifty-fifty. Um, so, remember, I said that in in a different another podcast that the mystery schools were symbolized by the three eyes. Mm-hmm. Yes, the left eye of Toth, mm-hmm. the right eye of Ra, and the middle eye of Horus. Mm-hmm. And it was Toth. It says it, it um it was Toth who sang the desires of the heart of Ra into physical manifestation Mm. and brought everything into being by giving it a name Mm. that's right naming it by naming it so there's a whole thing about the sacred vowels the Mm. sacred sounds and about naming things that's how you bring them into being there's a there's you know there's a lot of information in this Mm. um but what we're talking about of course is manifestation now again you know there's a lot of um information out there in the more kind of new age community if you want to put it that way that says you know thoughts create reality and that's great Mm -hmm. because it does but the point is like i think not for everybody but for a lot of people it makes it better to be able to have a bit more information than just thoughts create reality yeah exactly 
So that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to just kind of give it a little bit more. Hopefully, I'm doing that. Expand um, on it. Expand on it, yeah. You are. That, um, You're doing a good job. So, <laughs> thank you. So, um, so, just for example, you think about something. Mm-hmm. Right? Now, maybe say today, this week, for mm-hmm. example. Because we're very fickle, really, when you, you know. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, say this week, right, you were thinking you want something. Now, I'm only going to take something, for example. But say you're thinking you want a new car. That's just a yeah. off the top of the head example. It could be anything. A job, a house, a person, a boyfriend, a wife, a husband, mm-hmm. a mm-hmm. whatever, you know. So say you're thinking you want a new car and you're focusing on it and focusing on it and focusing on it and focusing on it and it doesn't happen in any way, you know what I mean, for mm-hmm. whatever Yeah, reason, for a long time. Whatever reason it doesn't happen. Mm-hmm. And you kind of give up on the idea, you know, you say, oh, look, forget it. Mm-hmm. And then maybe a year down the line you get a car. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Now, I can tell you 99.9% almost, I'm sh- fully sure that most people... In fact, I know most people, unless you're paying attention, mm-hmm. will not make the connection between what they thought a year ago. Yeah. And the car they're getting. Yeah. Right now. They won't make the connection. Yeah. Why? Because it's a time delay. That's mm-hmm. right. Yeah. Now, therein lies our clever little plan. Mm-hmm. You see, we built in what we call a time delay. Mm-hmm. Because we knew that when our consciousness fell and we went more asleep, which means asleep really means lack of information. Yeah. Mm. And, or if you want to put it in a more blunt way, ignorant. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, so we knew that the more ignorant we got, the more dense and destructive the things that we would mm. create with our mind would be. Yes. Mm. So we thought, uh-huh, well, we better do something. <laughs> so we built in the illusion of time. So we said to ourselves, okay, when we fall into that level of consciousness that we're really that ignorant, you know what I mean? That we're going to start creating destructive things. We know we're going to do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of confuse ourselves. So we're going to make ourselves, make it really difficult for ourselves to remember that what we actually do is create with our thoughts Mm -hmm. and desires by creating the illusion of time. Mm. Because if we have a thought one day and it takes a whole year to manifest for the thing to actually happen. Mm. then our attention span's not that long and we won't remember having we won't remember to connect the thought yeah with the, with the event yes and therefore we'll keep it safe because we didn't want us to be able to manifest what we everything that came out of yeah. our head in this fallen state yeah exactly mm. so yeah you could manifest your nightmare as well as your you do yeah that's the whole point that's what i'm saying <laughs> that's how all of this happens hello hollywood uh Yes, fallen consciousness manifests its fear. Yeah. Mm. Fear is a very strong emotion. Yeah. It's and overwhelming. Just like negativity versus positivity. Yeah, what you focus on is what you're going to create. And, exactly. and it doesn't matter whether you know you're doing it or not. Mm-hmm. You're either a conscious creator or an unconscious creator. Creator is the common denominator. Well, yeah. <laughs> it's better to It's up to you to be conscious or unconscious. You're creating either way, whether you know it or not. Yeah. Well, I personally feel it's good to be a positive well everybody who would be on the path to finding themselves if you want to put it that way yeah um in okay i can't speak for everybody but in my estimation anyway if you're on the path to ascension if you like um then the understanding of this information is what was left for us by us yeah in what we call the mystery schools Mm. um which is why the pyramid is built the way it is why the mounds are still here in ireland all the beautiful new grange nouth and douth like it's literally like frozen information well they were there were it, all the sites on on the ground is actually the crystal grid yeah it's a it's a physical mm. um representation of the crystal energy grid yeah mm-hmm. well yeah sorry to each it, nodal the point of the grid in the sky Mm-hmm. and a nodal point is where energy lines cross and make a vortex right mm. each nodal point of that grid in the sky and um would have a site counterpart on the ground mm. a temple a pyramid a mound somewhere over the earth do you know what i mean yeah um so time is so that we in this kind of fallen state of consciousness don't you know, have the ability to manifest every thought that comes into our mind. Yes. Because we knew that wouldn't be a good idea. I mean, look, look at look at what we do when we don't even know that. We <laughs> yeah, can, yeah, exactly. I mean, we can, we can, we're doing, we can create destructive enough things. Yeah. Well, yeah, like 
like those intrusive thoughts. I'm doing air quotations. Intrusive thoughts. Mm. Those fleeting thoughts that mm. you'd like. Yeah, that you, have. you wouldn't. Yeah. Well, I guess because you're in a fallen state of consciousness, the first thing you would think would be something Negative. fearful, right? That that is fallen yeah. consciousness will always manifest fear first. Mm. Yeah. What's the the worst? Because it's the a next very strong emotion. Like yeah. okay, how you manifest something is by focusing your energy on it, mm-hmm. focusing your attention on it. Mm-hmm. Bringing in all the senses. So yeah. if you're visualizing, manifesting something, mm-hmm. then you bring in all the senses. Mm-hmm. You think about the color of it, the sound of it, the feel of it. Mm. You, you repeat emotion. it over and over in your head. Yeah. Yeah. And you do it in a way that you know you already have it. You're not saying, oh, when I get this. You have Because it, you a know. manifester knows that the second they get a thought, mm-hmm. it, it's already going to happen. Yeah. Mm. Because thinking is creating. And if you are capable of conceiving the thought, then you are capable of manis- manifesting the thing yeah. yeah if you if you don't conceive it as thought then you won't manifest the thing yeah and even by creating a thought you're manifesting it in your like you've I already guess, manifested yeah because you're thinking the minute of you it, think of it you've already done it yes all you've got to do from now on is keep focusing energy on it mm-hmm. and it will happen <laughs> it will happen well, that's like that what was it you were saying like a machine at the beginning like that you know, you only needs a bit of energy and then it can start going on its oh, own. Perpetual, perpetual motion. motion. Perpetual motion, was yeah. I? Yeah. Yeah, very good, yeah. it's a good point. Um, I'm connecting it all. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so... Um, that's, you know, like, we were clever enough to kind of build in that delay that we call time. Yeah. Now, you know, you get a thought now and, as I said, a year later, six months later, it could be five years later. Mm. Yeah. The thing that you thought about actually happens. But because there's so much what we call time, which actually equals to events, <laughs> right? That took place between the thought that you had and the thing actually manifesting. Because there's so much time, you forgot. Mm-hmm. You for, you don't connect the thought with the event. Mm. Yeah. Now, when you begin to realize, and that's the, actually probably the hardest part for a lot of people, is to actually <laughs> discover that your thoughts and things that actually manifest in the physical world yeah. mm-hmm. have a connection. And the only way you can, <clears throat> okay, you can discover that in many ways, but how you test it out, obviously, <clears throat> is by thinking something, focusing on it, and making it happen. Mm. Yeah. You know? But for those on that path, and for those who have realized and discovered that thoughts create, desires and thoughts create, because mm. your the, the desire is, is the intuition, let's say. Yeah. The thought is the kind of active thought in your mind that now is becoming manifest. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, whereas if you think of a desire, it's kind of your, like if you think of a desire, like, oh, it's your heart passion, isn't it? Like it's my yeah. desire to do something. Yeah, like an impulse. So that's a kind of an emotion. It's passive. Yeah, you know? l- like not rational. E- even, yeah, yeah even generally. not rational, yeah. It's, well, your your emotion, your feminine is not rational. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like um, So that's the... the the desire if you like aspect of it and then the thought aspect because it's masculine you know so you have that desire to do something and then you start thinking about it which is masculine that's what what i mean by bringing your masculine and your feminine together you know so the desire that's in the heart and then the thinking about it Mm -hmm. and the physical work you put in Mm -hmm. to bring it into being Mm. that's bringing your masculine and your feminine together Mm. yeah and it's bringing your um head and heart if you want to say Yes. Together. Unified. In, into balance. So for alchemists and mystery school students, initiates, masters, they realize or are taught by somebody else or are guided by their guides to, to, to find out that um, there's a connection between what they think and what they what actually Create, happens yeah. and what's created in their life. So bit by bit by bit, they start to pay attention. And when mm. you bit by bit by bit start to pay attention between what you think and what happens bit by bit by bit you start to see oh my god i only just thought of that yeah and like the happened. evidence comes yeah. rolling in it starts coming yeah mm-hmm. so if you really want to put it to the test you know mm-hmm. think about something focus on it now i can tell you right now through having done this many times in my life okay i can tell you the only way you're going to fail at this is if you give up mm. too soon no no there's, there is no too soon okay if you give up. up because a thought to be made manifest has no time limit on it yeah you know, and now we're talking about time and I'm saying time now and I understand. But the point is, we're in a linear time experience. And if you have a thought and you want it to happen in 10 minutes time, well, then you, you might as well don't bother taking the experiment at all. Yeah. 
because what you've got to be able to do before you even start this is to formulate something that you want to make manifest in your in your mind okay focus on it do everything that you need to do to make it manifest which is keep your energy keep your attention on it keep it foremost in your mind Mm -hmm. bring in all the senses think about how it feels think about how it looks create it in your mind over and over again but the thing is if you start getting impatient after a week or a month or six months Mm -hmm. or a year and you give up you give up putting your energy to it Mm. then it's not going to happen yeah and there's a reason for that as well it's only the desires and thoughts that you really 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 want to make manifest Mm. that your higher self knows is in your highest good that you will allow yourself to manifest Mm. you won't allow yourself to manifest other stuff when you're in a lower consciousness Mm. and an unconscious creator yeah um, generally what you're creating is your fears mm. you know because what people do is they think about what they don't want yeah exactly people will yeah. think about oh god I hope this doesn't happen I hope this doesn't happen I hope this doesn't happen this is my worst nightmare this is my worst fear Well, I what's always happening feared now? this <laughs> thing happening you know mm. this type of thing and then ultimately because it's something maybe they've feared for a long time or they've said loads of times mm. when something happens they go oh my god that was the thing I always feared that's it well yeah you thought about it for ages and <laughs> yeah and when people fear things fear is such a strong emotion yeah yeah that what they're actually doing is they're doing every exact step to yeah. manifest things except for they're manifesting what they don't want <laughs> yeah exactly that's the unconscious yeah. creator yeah the unconscious creator is manifesting through fear what they don't want the conscious creator manifests consciously what they do want yeah you know so mm. and it's not rocket science anybody can do it that's the thing this a lot of this is made very complicated on purpose it's not complicated you know mm-hmm. but anyway if you pay attention to what you think mm-hmm. what's going on in your you know what you're desiring to create in your life mm. and what actually happens in your life if you mm-hmm. pay attention you'll see that you're the one that's creating it mm-hmm. yes and the more you do it what we call the time delay between mm-hmm. what you think what you desire and what you think and what you actually manifest gets shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter until you are what's known as um, a conscious creator. In other words, you're instantly manifesting your yes. experience and your reality. Mm. Actually, just I was thinking you were saying earlier about like how your higher self will only allow you to manifest things that are in your, you said, highest good. Mm-hmm. It kind of got me thinking, we were talking in the last podcast about... Um, I guess viewing things in like a neutral perspective Mm -hmm. and how you can be in duality and how you can view things as like in your highest good or your Mm -hmm. or your highest bad I guess if like you're manifest something even if it's negative can you view it as a positive like you know people say like in perspective you say oh it's that like yeah I know like at the time I thought it was horrible but in hindsight yeah it did that's a good point um Mm. it's true to say that we manifest our fears Mm -hmm. and we manifest often disaster for ourselves when we're unconscious (laughs) creators it is true to say that yes and i understand your question how can that be in your highest good yes i kind of get that yeah yeah i get you um so uh is it because we have free will uh, well yeah and also because even the fears and the disasters that you're manifesting Mm -hmm. if approached in the right way is for your highest good. Yeah, it can be yeah. for growth. Yes. For your soul's growth. It's always for growth. Yeah, exactly. Well, Nothing negative ever happens because there's a God in the sky up there somewhere <laughs> outside of you that doesn't like you and strong throwing <laughs> horrible stones at you. Lightning bolts. Do you know what I mean? That's, That's you're not, just not listening to your higher self. No. <laughs> everything that happens and even things that, as you, as we're saying now, even mm-hmm. things that we create ourselves, because we create everything ourselves, yeah. even the things that we create, our fears, our disasters are you know our unconscious creations if you like yeah and unconscious creators always create their fears so That's therefore it. they'll always create disasters now on one level i'm saying mm-hmm. that it's not in your highest good but on if you look at the grander scheme of things everything is in your highest good That's yeah. right. Yeah. so it's all about perspective really yeah from your 3d perspective if you are creating from fear then from your 3d mind you're going to be creating disaster mm-hmm. yeah exactly if you want to look from your higher self mind that disaster that you've created if if um, approached in the right way should be a catalyst for you to make you wake up and say why am I creating these disasters mm. yeah. it's supposed to be a lesson it's not meant to be a lesson yes I am it's not meant to be just look, a disaster there's a terrible thing because you're a bad person <laughs> yeah 
it's <coughs> not you created victimizing disaster, you. No, it's a lesson. Yes, that's why. You've I created think. this for yourself. Yeah. yeah. So, what well, say imagine you imagine you said to yourself at some point when you were fully conscious, okay? Mm-hmm. What I'm going to do is I'm going to let myself create all these um fears of my own of myself, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I know I'm going to think that there's some God in the sky that hates me and is making all these bad things happen to me. And I'm going to let myself believe that mm-hmm. for long enough until I gradually start realizing that actually this is me creating this myself. Yeah. Because it's like if somebody told you something, mm-hmm. it's like if I told you something now, right? Um, something that I considered, say, very profound and valuable information. And I told it to you and you weren't in the right place or time to receive it. Um, you'd be gone yeah Mm, mm, mm. it wouldn't be that like anything profound for you Mm -hmm. but if you had to go on a long journey and a long search and a a long heartache let's say yeah to find that information when you found it and kind of it integrated it it would mean way much more to you sure of course because you had to find it and work it out for yourself yeah Mm -hmm. then somebody just telling you yeah yeah then you're just receiving it all at once so that's what we set ourselves in that way. We set that up for ourselves. Yes. So we have allowed ourselves to manifest through our own fears. Mm. Until we realize, hey, we're manifesting our own fears here. Yeah. Because once we realize we're manifesting our own fear, then we can use the fear as, as the catalyst, the catalyst yeah. Yeah. to uh, get over whatever the fear is that we've actually manifest. Yeah. And once we get over that fear, we become stronger. And, yeah, and, and that fear yeah. could never subvert us again. Mm. Well, yeah, that also brings me to another recollection of people in the ancient mystery schools, which is also the now, right, I mm. guess, because mm. we're still doing it. Mm. Uh, they would do fear initiations, oh, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Which mm-hmm. is to ascend, to remember that you are the creator of your own reality, right? And mm-hmm. Well, the fear well, is... From what I'm, understanding right now <laughs> yeah the fear initiation was for what i said as well there about um when you're an unconscious creator you're going to create through fear so the fear initiations were to, to the goal would be for the initiate to realize that they are immortal mm-hmm, but yeah. it's also um for you to realize that there's nothing to fear yeah yeah that's do you that's know what i'm saying I... and that kind of goes back to what i was saying about the duality mm-hmm. it's there's o- it's only fear if you label it fear. Yeah, of course, yeah. That's what, yeah. I you think it's too. a positive agreement. So it's the fall in consciousness, if you like, yeah. mm-hmm. that manifests from a place of fear. Mm-hmm. Because that's the lower emotion. In the, in the higher self-consciousness, unity consciousness, mm-hmm. consciousness of love, there is no fear. That source, yeah. And there is no perception of negative energy. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it wouldn't be perceived as negative energy. It's just balanced. It's perceived as um, everything is perceived as um, an opportunity for growth. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Rather than like a fall in consciousness would see what it might think as negative as or oh being, that's a terrible bad thing that's I'm after being happened victimized. to me. I'm being victimized. I'm being victimized. Well, that's giving your power away. Yeah, that's the fall in consciousness. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, why is this happening to me? Mm-hmm. Yeah. This because you're an stuff unconscious always creator. Happens to me, <laughs> and you take it personal. And you, you think it's somebody else doing it to you. Oh, big God. But it's you. Yeah, like, you know. Yeah. Yeah, being... And until you work nice. your way through all that and, key, and and gradually move up your own ladder, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Of refinement to understanding that mm-hmm. it's all you. Yeah. There's nobody in the sky throwing stones at you because they don't like you. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. The stones that have been thrown at you are been thrown by yourself. Mm-hmm. At yourself. And you're doing it to wake yourself up. That's right. Mm-hmm. You know? Um, well, that's it. Anybody? That how has, else like, do you wake somebody up? Yeah. Like <laughs> with a shock. <laughs> Gotta give him a shake. <laughs> how do you wake somebody up? Only, do you know what I mean? Well, how does it? How does a hypnotist stop someone? They snap their fingers. They give them an unconscious it, it, signal. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, if somebody walks into a room and shines a light in your eyes when you're asleep, I'm like what? <laughs> and goes, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. What's the first thing you're gonna do? Jump. Wake up. <laughs> well, no, no. jump. Oh, well. The first thing you're gonna do is say, get out of my room and put the pull the covers <laughs> yeah. over my head yeah. and <laughs> resist to, to block out the light. Yeah. That's what you'll do. If somebody, if you're found sound asleep, and somebody, you're sound asleep in a dark room, and somebody bursts in and shines a light in your eyes, and goes, "Wake up, wake up, wake up!" Are you gonna open your eyes and look at that light? No, no, no way, you're not. Not sure. You have to reflect on it. You have to, yeah. You have to take time. You yes. have to become gradually acclimatized to the light. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, if somebody walked into your room and whispered, "Hey, 
wake up, wake up, wake up. Come and had a dimmer switch <laughs> and just gradually turned the light up. You'd be all right with it. Oh, yeah. like crap. But if somebody kicked your door in and shone a light in your eyes. No. No. Well, And that's what I'm saying we did for ourselves. Mm-hmm. That's the fear thing. We have allowed ourselves to manifest our own fears mm-hmm, mm-hmm. through a period of time. Right? That's like somebody coming in quietly and just turning up the dimmer switch quietly. Yeah. Right? Rather than kicking in the door. Yeah, yeah. Because that's too much of a shock for us. Mm. So we've allowed ourselves, it's the kindest way, even though it seems terrible, to allow ourselves to manifest our own fears because we know that gradually we'll realise that, hey, this is not somebody doing something to me. This is me manifesting this myself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No, I know a lot of people won't agree with that and that's fine, but... Can I, can I connect it to the larger cycle, kind of like the ascension? Mm-hmm. How does this how does this connect to ascension in terms of it is the same cycle? Well, it, how does it connect? Well, um, it's the manifest it's in the, fear is in, it, the duality thing. You yeah, know, is in the whole duality thing. Yeah. Um, well, I meant time in terms of like uh, waking up, like right. we're unconsciously creating whatever's around us. We've been programmed externally from us because mm-hmm. we don't remember we're the conscious creators. But now ascension, the people are waking up. The higher energy, the dimensional energy means they're going to remember, wait a minute, this is my creation mm-hmm. and I can change that. So yeah. I was just saying the illusion of time also connects to the ascension. And the, and as you're saying, yeah, and yeah, yeah, it does actually, sorry. That's I just interesting. meant the larger cycle, which yeah. is the cosmic cycle, mm. as opposed to on Earth. Yeah. And in that uh, waking up, as you said, you go from uh, Dissonance. the us and them kind yeah. of thinking, which... Um, you know, I have discussed before. Yeah. Um, I mean, we've discussed bits of this before, but... Well, I've spoken about the Yamo and priesthoods. Yes. The priesthood, rather. Um, versus, you know, Akhenaten and Aten. And, you know, if you want to look at it that way, that's a, a duality. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. Um, so, when consciousness awakens, if you like, and it rises mm-hmm. on the ascension cycle, that's why it's important, the whole duality thing, coming out of the duality, because... Um, the f- fear, if you like, is a duality thing and it's only manifest, you'll only manifest it in time and in that fallen consciousness state. Yeah. As mm-hmm. you come out of duality and see everything just as it is, not good or bad. Yeah. When you start to perceive that um, everything is for lessons and learning and what you might potentially see as bad is actually a catalyst for you to move and grow Yeah. Mm-hmm. rather than something bad. When you start elevating yourself beyond the duality and beyond judging and labeling things, that's when you start coming out of the perception of time. That's what I'm saying, yeah. And that's when you start mastering your own um, spiritual powers, if you want to put it that yeah. way. Because that is what the aim of the because, mystery schools was. Of course, yeah. Um, because ma- we this is how we create. We create with using all that we have, which is thoughts and desires to create. You know. Yeah. That's how we create everything. Mm. Our experience, everything, um, and f- as I said, fallen consciousness will always create fear because that's why fear is always used as a, a tool of manipulation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. So I've actually just written um a kind of small equation here because it's just something good to think about. Um. If you think of coal, you know, a piece of coal in the mm-hmm. ground. Coal, under pressure, over time, creates a diamond. That's right. You know? Uh (laughs) Aha. Now, okay, coal under the pressure of the entire, you know, the earth squashing it in the, uh, and over long periods of time, you know, Mm. um, maybe millions of years, a piece of coal will become a diamond. Mm -hmm. Alchemy is about speeding up the processes of nature. So an example of that would be diamonds that are artificially created now, right? Mm-hmm. So they'll do the same thing. They'll um, get carbon, they'll over period over in, in laboratory conditions. They'll put it into a pressure chamber and over a shorter period of time, but they'll increase the pressure and increase everything else mm-hmm. so that they can do it over a shorter period of time, they'll create a diamond, you know? Mm. So what I'm trying to say is if you can apply that to yourself, and your your fallen or unconscious consciousness or unaware consciousness, if you want to put it that way. Mm-hmm. And if you can see that as the coal, do you know what I mean? Mm. 
and over time pressure that's being applied are all the things that you think the bad things that are happening in your life mm. that's the pressure that's been applied and over time you get over those things you figure ways around them you figure solutions you figure how to get out of it or under it or around it you know mm. and you get on with it and each time you do that you're gradually becoming that diamond mm. so it's just a thought I want everyone to keep in their mind if they feel that they're under pressure mm. you know it's part of the transformation what I'm saying is yeah, yeah. what I'm saying is to become a diamond yeah to become the diamond body that to become the light body Crystal the process diamond. of alchemy is if you can consider your unenlightened your lower consciousness as the coal mm -hmm. so it has to be put under pressure over time in order to become a diamond to become diamond light to become light yeah so if you consider that this life you're having is that process you are the coal your life is the process of the under pressure, mm -hmm. you know, and the time that you're having this experience for is that time in the equation. And at the end, the goal is that you come out a diamond. That's right. That's alchemy and that's ascension. So anybody that's feeling under pressure. Yeah. If you can just think of it as a positive thing and not a bad thing. Yeah. Internally and externally. It's just all see it as. Yeah. Well, you know, the pressure over time will turn you into a diamond if you approach it that way yeah mm -hmm. um it's a nice thought mm. um so i'm going to finish on that actually okay i think that's great yeah um so we'll just say goodbye for now and if anybody wants to email me the usual you know email address is info at com. um so i'm going to say goodbye and thank you for listening mm -hmm. i'll say the same goodbye come back again Goodbye and thank you for listening, our um. little diamonds. Slon, <laughs> slon. Thank you. Slon. Thank you. <laughs>